Unit size. My argument is that unit size has been eliminated. The only thing that's talked about in unit size, there isn't an in-depth thing that goes through the book. It simply says unit size 20 plus for Novlars. For lead belchers, it's uh, two to five. Okay, so there's a limit. Well, that's one of those limitations that GW, I think, intended to get rid of. Unit sizes, as discussed in the basic rule book, so if you ignore unit size here, and you look for unit size here, the only thing that says in here, doesn't say anything about minimums and maximums, it simply says that a unit is any one model or more. That's it. No maximums, no minimums, except for it must be at least one model. Um, so this thing here that says you cannot have more units of Noblar fires than you have units of Ogre Bulls. Again, it's an entry limitation on a unit. The unit is Noblar fighters. The entry limitation is you cannot have more Noblar fighters than you have units of Bulls. That's one of those unit entries that you ignore. It's not a special rule. If it's a special rule, it'd be listed under special rules. If it was an option, it'd be listed under options. If it was a weapons and armor, it'd be listed under that. All those things that still apply from the unit entry here, this handy dandy selection for making an army, they're given in the basic rule book. Now, it doesn't cover largely insignificant or bicker in the basic rule book. You're right, but the basic rule book tells you that certain units have special rules, okay? And those special rules are given um, better explanation elsewhere in the book. This is true. The errata doesn't tell you to ignore it largely insignificant and bicker on page, I don't know here, on page 42. It doesn't say anything about that. So it's still in the game. Options, you know that they have options. Why? The basic rule book says that troops have options. So even if you ignore page 67 that says something about options, you don't ignore it here. Why? Because they still have options based on the basic rule book. See, everything they wanted left in the game, they included some kind of reference to in the basic rule book. Anything they didn't want left in the game, restrictions, things like that, they didn't include any of it in the basic rule book. And they said specifically, choose your army based off of everything in the basic rule book. So, with that said, all limitations on all units are now gone. Unless the errata or a new army book comes out and specifically says something about a limitation. Great example. Dwarves and the uh, Anvil of Doom. Okay, Dwarves, if you do exactly what I just did, you would read it and you would say, well, the Anvil of Doom is one of those things that they talk about when they say that a limitation has been removed. Yay, huzzah, I can take as many Anvil of Dooms as I can afford. Unfortunately, in the Dwarf Errata, if you read for Anvil of Doom, the Anvil of Doom has had its special rules listed in the Errata. And the Anvil of Doom is still given a 0 to 1 restriction. They don't just leave it at 0 to 1. They actually explain to you what 0 to 1 means. Why did they do that in the errata? Well, because they erased it in the book. So if we were to do exactly what GW wanted, we would tear out page 66 and 67, or we'd spray paint it black. If it was spray painted black, we wouldn't know what anything on that page said or represented. Okay. So if we didn't know anything on that page, what it said or represented, then all the things forward of that page, the unit entries that list limits and things like that, sure, you could think it means something, but it doesn't. You're supposed to ignore it. Simple as that. Um, people seem to really have a hard time believing that GW changed the game in some way. This is just the next ev evolution of the game. Most of this, and I pointed this out um, in the previous video, most of this comes from people being stuck on 6th edition, 7th edition rules. I use examples like newer edition books. Vampire Counts, for example, was an edition or a book that came out in the 7th edition. Okay, Read through the Vampire Counts book. You'll notice there aren't things that limit you to one of this or uh, multiples of that, only if you take this, that kind of thing. They were already heading in the direction that 8th edition has finally brought us to. 8th edition is the, the first time that they've said, okay, now we're just doing a mass wipe. Which doesn't really affect most of those newer army books that came out because they were already being wiped. Look at any of the new army codexes that have come out in the last edition, 7th edition. Um, they've eliminated 0 to 1 restrictions. They've eliminated 1 plus restrictions. The only codexes that still have that stuff listed are the really old codexes that haven't been updated since 6th edition. 
Ogre Kingdoms, Bretonians, Wood Elves. Um, I think that's it. Everything else since then that has come out, the restrictions don't apply. That are they not only do they not apply, they they didn't even bother putting them in. There are older units of Empire. Um, I think Great Swords was one of them. You could only take one unit of Great Swords before in sixth edition. Well, when seventh edition Empire came out, Great Swords weren't limited. Uh, same is true for Knights of the Inner Circle. Do you remember how Knights of the Inner Circle you could upgrade one unit of Knights to Knights of the Inner Circle? Um, and then when 7th edition came out, they got rid of that. GW has been making this move all the way till now. 8th edition is the first time they put it into a rule book and said, all those old books, some books had a system that was in place that they don't want in place anymore. Ignore it. Use the system presented here and only the system presented here. That's what they mean. They mean books like Ogre Kingdoms, Bretonia, things that they haven't had a chance to update in three editions now. <laughs> so until an errata or a fac or a new book comes out that says, yeah, Ogre Kingdom, sorry, we still want you to buy bowls and only have one tyrant and your scrap launchers are only accessed by buying uh, units of Noblars, which you can't buy unless you have units of bowls. Yeah, we know it sucks, but you still got to do it. Until they come out and say that in print on an errata or with a new Order Kingdoms book, use the new selection system. So hopefully that clears it up for some of you guys that are s still stuck on, on the issue. Um, it's very clear. Ignore the unit entry and any limitations that apply. Unit entry is the name and the limitation. Okay? The name is Noblar Fighters. The limitation is you have to have a unit of bowls for every unit of Noblar Fighters. The name is bowls. You have to have at least one plus. The name is Tyrant. You have to have zero to one. Those are all the unit entry things that you no longer apply because you ignore that page. You ignore the things that talk about the limitations and the unit entries. For Bretonians, okay, here's a good example of one of the things that GW did that really started confusing people because it, it really lent to the argument that they did get rid of the zero to one restriction. Um, they corrected it in two places. They corrected it in both uh, page 65 and then again on page 68. They said, ignore this paragraph that says you have to have one unit of Knights of the Realm. They did it in two spots. Why? Because it's printed in two spots. That's why they did it. Okay, guys.